Brad, back with the details this week. I know you love to talk about the power run game. Uh, let's talk about that for the Chiefs, something they went to the second half with a lot of success. You know, it seems every week they're just running the ball really, really well when they need to. And, you know, it just stands out that they're able to, to pick up key first downs, um, you know, kill the clock whenever they need to with, you know, leaning on those guys up front and, and Kareem Hunt. Yeah, it's uh... – Pretty crazy. I looked it up. You're going to talk about the power uh, mm -hmm. in, in the power run game, uh, the type of run that is, that downhill run. But the Chiefs actually ran it 12 <clears throat> times against the Bucks. I looked it up the second most times, according to Sports Info Solutions, of any team this season. Uh, Commanders had 13 this past week, but uh, this really talks about something that Andy Reid, you know, we know he loves the pass game, but in this game, man, they were getting downhill. Yes, they were. Uh, so, yeah, power. Uh, what, what power is, is you're going to get, so th this play is, power right you're gonna that the entire side uh right side of the offensive line and here they're they've got six alignment on the field two tight ends two running backs so no receivers they're responsible for basically their inside gap and that guy on the outside of of uh i believe that's noah gray there uh number 83 um carson Steele is going to kick him out because everybody's blocking uh this way here uh, to the left on the front side. So that's going to leave that guy on block. So you have to have somebody account for him. Um, and you can, if you can get double teams on the line of scrimmage, that's great. But it's hard in these, uh, you know, short yardage situations because guys are walked up. You know, defenses are playing for this type of scheme. Uh, so everybody's going to block the gap to their inside. The backside guard there, Joe Tooney, is going to pull around for the play side linebacker. And then uh, Creed Humphrey is going to back block. Uh, Wanya Morris is going to uh, – you know, basically what, what's called a hinge block on the backside. And then that's, I'm sorry, that, that is not a tight end there. That's Justin Watson, isn't it? I misspoke. That is Watson. Oh, he looks like a tight end. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, he's in any, he, yeah, he plays like one sometimes. He's, you know, just physical and getting got that type of body. But he's going to cut off their backside. They're going to try to build a wall. Um, so here's what you get right there. You got Carson Steele kicking out. You got down blocks on the front side. You got a backside guard wrapping. And, and Hunt's job is to follow that inside arm of the, wrapper that backside guard and just try to find space here which he does a good job of yeah uh, great execution this was the fourth and one play from the chiefs and so i also wanted to highlight here i know you mentioned this in real time to me brett uh carson seal here 228 pounds six foot uh this kickout block he has is against a uh, an outside linebacker who i looked up I believe he was 258 six five <laughs> 258 so um this is not perfect technique but this is getting the job done against a much bigger dude you're right. Yeah, the, the technique leaves a little bit to be desired. He drops his head a little bit, hits with the wrong shoulder, uh, but it, just violent. I mean, he just, you know, as you said, that he's given up 30 pounds to this guy, and, and he ends up getting that guy on the ground. So um, he gets the job done. That's what you need with power on that, that kickout block, is you just got to keep him outside so no impact in that play in the A or B gap. Going to go the opposite way with the power. This time, uh, Trey Smith is going to go up in the hole. Who are some of the highlights on this particular play for uh, the Chiefs, Brett? So, um, Kelsey and Wanya Morris do a good job of gapping there. And Kelsey's job is pretty easy because there's no way in to his immediate inside. So, he's going to work all the way back to that backside linebacker, number 51. Uh, Morris does a good job of, of uh, collecting that guy and gapping him. Uh, Tooney, of course, sees a... Um, linebacker triggering. Yep. Which, yep. So that, that guy triggers fast. So he sees that and is able to get off that double team. So if you could roll that back to the start there, Jesse, the very beginning. So ideally what you would like is a double team right there between 64 and 62, Morris and, and Tooney, um, to get maximum movement with a double team. But once that linebacker triggers, Tooney's responsible for that gap to his inside. So he knows if he doesn't abort that double team and get off that double team, then there's going to be run through. There's going to be penetration. There's going to be problems. So you basically have to have your eyes on that guy and, and, and your gap and pick, pick that up. I know you wanted to highlight him in a little bit here, Brett, but uh, let's go ahead and highlight 87 here, what he does on this play. Yeah, just good eyes. You know, he steps down to his gap and notices it's not threatened, so he continues on that path and picks up that backside linebacker. Uh, Noah Gray does a good job coming across and not a vi you know, it's not near as violent as we saw with Carson Steele last time, but that's all you need in power is just keep that guy to the outside. So he's not, you know, working in there. And then because that linebacker triggered in the a gap uh, with Joe Tooney, that's used, that would be Trey Smith's guy usually 
as he's pulling around. But because he shot that gap, Trey Smith's got nobody. So he's really going to pick up. It's uh, big that's... eyes here. He, he's exactly. going, oh, my gosh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks up that that uh, weak side safety there that has come down. Uh, number 31 is we're going to see him come in the screen. And then, of course, Hunt stays disciplined on his path, chasing that inside arm and, and gets the space. And we talked about this. This is the cream Hunt experience right here where – Follows the inside shoulder, uh, exactly what you want, the exactly the price, precise steps. And then this is it, too, because he's one-on-one -on -one with the safety. This is a great look for an NFL running back. He's <coughs> not really breaking many of these tackles. So the Chiefs get what the run is intended for. They get 13 yards. They don't get an explosive play, but that's okay because uh, they've been just kind of churning first downs together over and over again. Absolutely. All right, uh, we're going to get a very similar play, the game-winning play, and uh, you already highlighted this one on the first one because the Chiefs have the same personnel in there. Exact same personnel, exact same call. Um, that's same, yeah, formation and play. So Tampa's in a little bit different defense here. I know we've we've referenced what, what basically what is a gaps defense. You can see they've got every gap on the line of scrimmage covered right there. That makes it very difficult. You're not going to get any double teams in that scenario. They're looking to get penetration. Um, and really the Chiefs here, what they want to accomplish up front is to prevent any penetration for a tackle for a loss. You're not going to get a ton of movement versus this type of defense and this type of personnel. As you can see, they've, they've brought in their big bodies there. I think they have five defensive tackles in there. Um, so you're not going to get great movement, but all you got to do is basically get a stalemate in the line of scrimmage enough to get your running back some momentum to get him in the end zone. Yeah, I know uh, you've talked about getting some movement, and on the front side of this play, you got Caliendo here again and Noah Gray, and uh, those two guys get their job done. They do, and and Gray uh, really kind of creates that movement. And then where we saw Kelsey, him able to go all the way back to the backside linebacker last snap, Gray does not do that because he prioritizes movement there. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, he prioritizes, okay, I'm going to get maximum movement force 54 to have to work over and scrape over the top. And if he does, it doesn't matter because our running back's going to be in the end zone. I did want to also highlight, uh, we talked about uh, Carson Steele earlier um, going against the guy 259. I looked this guy up. You want to guess, Brett? Um, I'm, I'm going to say 205. 198. Okay. It's going to be a little bit easier for him on this play, and obviously gets the job done here too. I'm pretty sure you and I could have made that kick out block. <laughs> not, not to take it, but you you look at how wide he is. I mean, I guess that's a, a I don't know if that's a nickel, it's a safety, I, maybe a corner if he's going 98. But yeah, he's he's all all still does is have to take a good path on his inside half and, and just keep him out there. So a little bit easier job than he had against the the 260 pound DN we saw a couple snaps ago. For a couple of these plays too, Brett, I wanted you to be sure to highlight the wall that you saw too on the backside because some of these plays don't get to going either if uh, the backside is leaking out there. So I guess once this thing rolls, can you kind of tell me what you're seeing here? Sure. So from the center on over, minus obviously the backside guard that, that's wrapping around, their job is to, to create and wall off that backside so there's no penetration. So Humphrey's block is what's called a back block or a choke. It's been called um, at times. And then the hens block by the left tackle. So, yeah, their, their job is to basically um, secure that backside so nobody's able to get any penetration and impact the front side of the play. Sure, we're going to get on this play as well. Yep, same same thing right there. There you see it. You, you got that red wall and, you know, you got guys are taking care of the business on the front side of the play and then you got space there. Same thing here. They give up a little penetration, but it doesn't matter as long as they, you know, they get beat slowly until the running back gets past um, or to the line of scrimmage. They're good. Overall, Brett, what are you seeing from the Chiefs downhill run game? What is making it so successful when you're watching and rewatching these three plays? Really just really good center and guard play and average and sometimes better than average tackle play in the run game uh, and obviously tight ends that, that know their role um, and are good at using their technique um, to, you know, get guys blocked in the run game as well. And then a running back that knows how to see it, knows who he is. Most importantly, I think he knows, you know, he's not, we saw that one-on-one -on -one with the safety there. He knows, you know, I, I'm not going to make this guy miss. I'm going to get, you know, a lot of six, eight, sometimes 12 yard runs. And, and, you know, they're just, 
this is their identity in a lot of ways right now. 